transport.ie. The strategy sets out the transport schemes and measures needed to tackle climate change, to reduce the impact of congestion, to deliver a safe and attractive cycling environment, and to develop sustainable communities across the city and region. Have your say on the draft strategy at www.nationaltransport.ie. At Tesco, we've got wonderful offers in store for you this Christmas. Enjoy a festive roast with Tesco Irish Housekeepers Cut, now half price. Stock up on fresh favourites like Tesco pomegranates or Tesco flat mushrooms, 250 gram, 49 cent each. Or get into the holiday spirit with Cadbury Twirl 5 pack, 7 up light, 2 litre, and more, any 5 for 5 euro. Tesco, every little helps. Auctioneers, estate agents, letting agents and property management agents operating in the Republic of Ireland must hold a Property Services Regulatory Authority PSRA licence. An auctioneer may auction land, fine arts, antiques or animals at a mart. When engaging an agent, don't assume your agent is licensed. Check the PSRA Register of Licensed Agents at PSR.ie. Unlicensed agents are breaking the law. Report on licensed operators to info at PSR.ie. Remember, no PSRA licence, no PSRA consumer protection. Like a lot of people, you probably have money sitting in the bank earning practically zero interest while prices go up and up. At Ask Paul, we're known for making money work smarter. So, we started our investment club, a community of people investing for the future to beat inflation and make their money work harder. But don't take our word for it. Ask one of the 5,500 investors who invest through Ask Paul each month. Or find out for yourself at askpaul.ie. Pax Asset Management DAC trading is Ask Paul and Pax Financial is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. The Sunday Papers on Off The Ball. Now you're very welcome back. We're going to go through the Sunday Papers. We have Gavin Comiskey of the Irish Times with us who joins us from Luxembourg. We have Kieran Cunningham, Chief Sports Writer with the Irish Daily Star who is here in studio. The back pages, as you can imagine, very much focused on the international action at Lansdowne Road, Sexton and the Boys in Green blow away world number one team on Day of Glory, says the Sunday World. Uh, beneath that, Kenny can do it. Picture of Stephen Kenny and it's Seamus Coleman fully behind the Irish boss. That's the back page of the Sunday World. The Irish Sun on Sunday then. Mole Blacks, Ireland seal third win in five over New Zealand. And then the Dane Coles comment on Jonathan Sexton. Mouthy C, which is... Uh, uh, one way of putting it, Dan Coles. And then Brendan Holmes in on United. This is an exclusive, apparently, in the back page of The Sun. Brendan Rogers uh, stepped closer to becoming the Manchester United manager. He's gone house hunting in Cheshire, apparently. So we'll keep an eye on that. The uh, Sunday Independent, Brilliant Ireland Boss All Blacks. Great picture of Caelan Dara celebrating with Ronan Kelleher after scoring Ireland's uh, third try in that game so uh, Caelan Doris well both of them actually exceptional yesterday the Mail on Sunday go with the Irish Rugby as well and New Dawn is their headline this is just the beginning says Sexton as Brilliant Ireland Blitz All Blacks and it's a picture of James Ryan Conor Murray and Jack Conan on the final whistle beneath that then Irish progress uh, dismissed by Luxembourg boss this is Luke Colts who reckons in the last couple of games Ireland have gone back to quote unquote British style of football Stephen Kenny guffawed slightly when he heard that in the press conference yesterday and then we have the Sunday Mirror here Doris Day Caelan and Co slay Kiwi Kingpins as Johnny eyes more and then the Sunday Times front page also going with Ireland 29 New Zealand 20 you better believe it and it's a picture of Caelan Doris uh, celebrating the amazing try he scored somebody inside I think it might have been Peter O'Reilly referenced it as the uh, Jamie Heaslebesque from 09 against France and was a touch reminiscent of that, wasn't it? Sexton, this win will not be our peak, is what Johnny Sexton is insisting. Like I said, Kieran Cunningham here in studio, Gavin mm. Comiskey over in Luxembourg. You were at the stadium yesterday. That wasn't a bad one to be at. Were you there working or as a fan? Or No, well, I, I, I did write a piece of them this morning, but I wasn't at the press box. I went with two friends. So uh, I'm glad I did because I was quite close to the pitch. Where the seats were only a few rows back and it, it really gave you an up close and personal view of an incredibly ferocious test match and um, you know predictably you always get the, the you know this wearisome nonsense after Ireland of a huge win like that yeah it's only a friendly it's only a challenge match New Zealand were drinking Guinness in the Guinness in the storehouse and they're, they're end of a long tour and they don't really care 
But it, if you were there and if you got a close-up view of it, like it was incredibly intense, incredibly physical. Like you could actually hear that where we were, you could hear the players groaning after some of the hits. Like they were so extreme. And um, it's hard to think of a game like that. Like if you were to, you probably had seven or eight man of the match contenders from Ireland, and you couldn't. It's hard to p- pick an Iron, Irish player who didn't perform. You know that it's it's very unusual for in a team game to get that. That like generally. You know, if you get half your players playing reasonably well, four or five, okay, and then you, you're always going to allow for two or three that just don't do it in the day. But this was an all-round team performance and a massive impact from the bench and a very important impact for the bench. So I can understand why there's such a reaction to it. Like Because if you do want to make progress, if you do want to be a force at World Cups, you have to beat the big teams, but after that you have to beat them consistently. And to beat the All Blacks three times in five years is a big deal. And it should be looked on as a big deal. Yeah. They've set themselves up, I think, for a warm welcome next summer with three tests away in New Zealand, Gav, but we'll come to that in due course. Your reaction to the game yesterday, did you get to see it or were you watching a Stephen Kenny press conference? Uh, Seamus Coleman came in with two, two, three minutes to go, so we missed... Uh, we were lit, like we didn't see Joey Carberry put it beyond them, but uh, the football lads say they're not into rugby, but everyone, everyone bar two of the Irish travelling party was watching that on our devices and iPads and laptops. We were all glued to it. Because who, it's... who are the two, Gav? Name and shame. Not, no, no, I'm not doing <laughs> I'm not naming shame. I'm too... Um, no, no, Omerta still reigning supreme with the uh, press packs. But, uh, yeah, no, we were all we were all wondering our day, because the Irish team were about to start training on the pitch. And Kenny, uh, who's not always on time, but uh, we were wondering were they all stalling to watch it? Like Because I'm sure they, you know, they all, of course, they cross paths with each other and have a little bit of... Uh, no, I suppose it's just a glad of respect for each other. But the um yeah, we were all glued to it in the Luxembourg press room. Um with a few Luxembourg journalists not having a clue what we were doing. Um but funnily enough, it was all over uh, Luxembourg last night. It was it was being replayed in a lot of the bars and stuff like that. That didn't even have Irish people in them. Um I thought it was I thought it was relentless. I thought uh everything is kind of James Jameson Gibson Park, the way he plays, the way his pass is, the, the rapidity of it. He should be an all black. Um, same goes for Bundy, Aki and James Lowe. I think they all would have been All Blacks by now um, if they had stayed there, but they obviously made a very good financial decision for themselves and their future to come up here. Um, so while I'd say it was brilliant to be there, it was unbelievable to be in the stadium, but the um, it does feel, feel a little bit familiar, no? uh, a team of Leinster schoolboys, mostly Ian Henderson, Peter O'Mandy aside, and three would be All Blacks, you know? That's what I was, That's what this is built on, and, and it is in the middle of a World Cup cycle. So, sorry, I, I know it's a great day, and I'm dampening it down a bit, but uh, we have been here before. In some respects, yes. The re- in the respect that we haven't been here before is that 2018, and to a lesser extent, 16, but 2018 was the culmination of a brilliant coach in Joe Schmidt, who seemed to be ahead of the curve, bringing a team to a peak. Grand Slam year, brilliant tour in Australia. It was all... Not not predictable, but there were uh, staging posts along the way to the All Blacks defeat in 18. This one, to an extent, Gav, I would say, has come not quite out of nowhere because there was the England win and there was the promise of last week in a sense of things beginning to turn. But you go back to mid-Six Nations just this very year and Andy Farrell was under pressure. So it's been a really quick about turn, I would say. Yeah, uh, Mike Cat has every right to feel smug after the way he was kind of treated um, when the, the back line wasn't firing. What's happened is, and this is the thing that Irish rugby have needed to do forever, is they've just picked up a team of, the pack is just athletes. Everyone in that pack is a back rower. Um, and that was the thing that Irish rugby always needed to do. And all the best Irish rugby teams had that. Um, like every, like uh, Kelleher was a back row until he was a teenager. He was switched in. I thought he was immense. Um, he's got Dan Sheehan coming in after him. Uh, yeah, so that's how Ireland are going to play. That's how Ireland have been trying to play on and off for years anyway, where just a bunch of athletes and you just... The the most encouraging thing going into the future is it, it wasn't about individuals. Every time New Zealand scored, Ireland came back at them harder, which used to always be the other way around when you play against the Springboks, Australia or New Zealand. They'd come, Ireland would score against them and then they'd, they'd rip into you and get two scores back. It was the other way around. And you never felt like New Zealand were going to win the game. Like the Will Jordan uh, bit of magic aside, still straight away Ireland were back up in them and just played them off the pitch uh, athletically uh, and physically to a certain extent. But 
And again, I, I sound like I sound like I'm so negative, but this this New Zealand team has to be exhausted. You know, the, if you look at what they've they've effectively been in a bubble for 14 months. Um, and Sexton even said it himself. He goes, "If this is the peak, uh, it's no use to anyone." So um, the least they are conscious of us that they they know they've been here before, and Sexton knows he's Sexton's been here several times. Where you, that's the kind of performance you want to see in a World Cup final against New Zealand, and we've never done that. So at least everyone's aware of it that uh, the next step is is the most important one. But um, great day, great performance, and finally everyone knows about Kaylin Doris. I remember watching him when he was 15. He's best. And he was playing like under 18s for Black Rock in Schools Cup. And it was like a Nick Timoney team. It was a team where nine, eight, nine lads ended up going professional. And uh, he was the best player in fourth year in school on a team of 18 year olds when he was only 15. And he was always, you're always, you, you could see the man strength in him. And you can see that yesterday. He physically, he doesn't look like an Irish player, you know. He's got that Stephen Ferris almost strength, which is um, hugely encouraging. Yeah. So the front page of the Sunday Independent, for instance, Johnny Sexton, if this is the peak, it's no good for anybody. There's definitely room for improvement individually. And you can see some of the stuff in the first half in terms of taking our chances. We could have scored a few tries in the first half. We need to keep our feet on the ground and keep moving. And then you take the Sunday Times front page, for instance, Kieran, and it's Sexton. This will not be our peak on the front page. Mm. There's less of a we've reached the top of the mountain feel here than there was in 18, certainly. Uh, yeah, but I'm not sure. I'd need to go back and check. I'm not sure if the players ever came back, came out and said at the time, you know, we've, you know, we're, we were, we're here in but 2018. I, I, or I felt there was more of it. We've finally beaten the All Blacks on home soil. Right. Okay. Yeah. We've Maybe done it. We've climbed yeah. the mountain okay. to a degree. Well, it's clear they're stung. Like particularly somebody like Sexton has been to a lot of World Cups and World Cups where you Ireland always falls short. So. You know, nobody within the Irish camp needs to be told that the World Cup record is dismal. You know, that like they've been hyped up so often and so much that uh, it's going to hang over them until they until they breach that. But you still, you know, the, the 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 series in New Zealand next year when you play them three times, you know, that's going to be really telling because you know it's it's, it's very different circumstances. It's going to be a fresher New Zealand on home soil, and it's a really different challenge. But you know, that was such a strange game yesterday that, you know, Ireland were 10-5 down at half time after being playing extraordinarily well. But they were just, uh, New Zealand just showed, even in the, the state they were in, how clinical they are. Like, I think they had four try scoring chances, scored two, had one disallowed. Yeah. You know, they were far more clinical than Ireland. Ireland butchered quite a few. But um, uh, j- just the whole the occasion, like, there was a brilliant atmosphere, partly because, you know, you know it's the first really big game at, at the Viva with a full house since since the first lockdown and there was a release um, you know of emotion because of that I think and even um, though it dragged on like all games do now it was over two hours uh, but you know this time we're more tolerant of the delays I think because it was it was very, it was a completely gripping game but uh, clearly there's a bigger picture there always is a bigger picture because of Ireland's World Cup record but um I think, you know, they're setting the right tone straight away, as you say, like Sexton and uh, Andy Farrell and they're like, nobody wants to get carried away with this. You have to back it up. So to give a sense of some of the coverage, uh, Peter O'Reilly in the Sunday Times, Ireland's magical night. He meant, It was him, it was Peter O'Reilly who did describe Caelan Doris scoring a try for the ages, reminiscent of Heaslip's mm. charge against France in 09. He's, he notes as well, the All Blacks made a surprising number of errors and looked spooked by Ireland's energy at times. Ireland uh, had uh, 70% roughly of territory and possession in the first half, let, yet New Zealand led 10-5. And Ireland were giving away more penalties as well, seven in the first half compared to New Zealand's four. New Zealand's defensive re- resilience was the story of the first half. On five or six occasions, they were camped on their own try line but held Ireland out with a combination of grit and wit. They had just two opportunities to score and took one of them an impressive strike rate. And that was the worry at half time. Bernard Jackman in the Sunday Independent then, he I think highlights the most encouraging aspect of this win, Gav, because he talks about how Ireland made 20 offloads against Japan last week, which surpassed the 18 we made in total during the last uh, last year's Six Nations. But he said our first attack yesterday showed that this team was going to take the game to New Zealand. We found the 1-3-2-2 shape that Mike Catt has built perfectly 
with some good passing and decoy lines from our forward pods, we shortened their defensive line enough to allow Gary Ringrose put Jack Conan and Andrew Conway away down the right-hand side. The next phase saw James Lowe at first receiver, Sexton as second playmaker. We quickly moved the ball to midfield where Tyke Furlong punched another hole. The structure and skill set gives you the chance to play heads up rugby and this win will give us the flagship win that elite players sometimes need to really buy in and believe. And that is, I think, the most encouraging aspect. This was not reactive in any way. This was Ireland on the front foot playing rugby on their terms, the way they wanted to play it and taking risks. I mean, throwing those offloads and at times the offloads didn't work and at times it resulted in turnovers and they kept throwing them and I don't really remember an Irish team doing that. Yeah, no, Bernard Jackman writes a good column and he, he gives credit to the enormous influence of New Zealand coaches all the way down through the history of Irish rugby. Uh, the key thing is, and, and you touched on it there, and Andy Farrell said it openly, that our wingers are, they basically have freedom to roam. And you no better to pair than Lowe and Andrew Conway to do that. Um, they were, ev- they're everywhere. They're, they're literally told, if you're not in the game, get in the game. And again, it's the athletes thing. It's play like back rowers. If you're a winger on the wing, get off your wing and get the ball. Um, Lowe had some choice. Lowe's interview after the game was very good. Some choice uh, words for how the media have gone on about his defence, and his defence helped win the game for Ireland, um, which was, you know, it was very important. But at the same time, we're we're going back to uh, we're, we're talking about something that's um, that's not sustain, not long term sustainable. We're talking about key players like Lowe, James Gibson Park, Bundy Aki. I don't think we win this game without these three New Zealanders. And after the match, Lowe was talking about, uh, he openly, you know the way you, you pretend, oh, I'm Irish and all this stuff, but no one's even pretending anymore. He's like, I'm a New Zealander. It was a dream of my lifetime to play against the All Blacks and to face them. And um, I, I thought that was quite telling, you know, because there's no more James Lowe's, James Gibson Parks and Bundy Keys. They're gone now. That's over. So um, the, the Irish, you still haven't expanded their reach outside of a small little uh, catchment area. Um, that just hasn't happened, you know. So, well, um, this is a great day. It was a great result. But I'm, I'm, I'm yet to be convinced how sustainable it is. I think the next two years are going to be, you know how they're going to play. And it doesn't matter. It's very hard to combat that. Like Joe Schmidt was coaching methods were figured out from 2018 to 2019 by the best rugby minds in the world. Eddie Jones, Razzy Erasmus, Steve Hansen. But this, you can figure it out all you want. But there's not much you can do about Kelleher running out of backs, uh, Caelan Doris running at backs, you know, smaller men. So it's going to keep us in the fight in every game. I don't think it'll keep us in the fight in the second and third test in New Zealand next summer because it'll be the opposite way around. Ireland will be jaded, just like New Zealand were jaded now. So I'm sorry for being so negative because it was a great result and a great day. But uh, I think there is a lot of context we should remember. Yeah, no, the context is very important, absolutely. Be as... uh negative as you want I don't think you're being negative I think you're it's a rounded view realistic yeah it's realistic and it's where are we and where are we realistically because otherwise we, I mean, we could say everything's perfect but then it looks a bit foolish when Ireland don't suddenly win the World Cup so it's it's good to flag there are issues for sure Unhappy Foster Hale's best ever Irish performance this is just a small piece Will Slattery had it mm. on uh, page 6 but it is significant I think when you've got Ian Foster who was there as an assistant to Steve Hansen for the 2016 and 18 losses he said this is the best performance he has ever seen from an Irish side so again, absolutely accepting everything and probably agreeing with everything Gav is saying and acknowledging this is a November test and not a World Cup one. This is the best performance Ian Foster's ever seen from an Irish side. They thoroughly deserve their win. I was really impressed by them. They played a very high retention game, but they also had an ambition to play a bit more around that. So it's a bit wider in how they're playing, some of the phase stuff and how they counter-attack. Uh, don't get me wrong, I think that was a very good performance. It's probably the best performance I've come up against in my time. Now, he didn't love the last 50 minutes, a lot of stoppages, a lot of cramping. There was a lot of deliberate slowing of the game, which is a bit frustrating. I think it sucked a bit of uh, juice out of the end of it as well. And I've no doubt Ireland did that a touch in the same way South Africa would do that to their hearts. Content. Yeah, well, that's that's game management. Everyone does that or any, any smart team would do that or try and do that. But, you know, like he, he might be he might be on the money, you know, that it's the best performance because, of, you know, the 15 who started, like even looking at player ratings mm-hmm. around the papers, the lowest anybody has got, I think, is uh, Ian Henderson is seven in, in the uh, Sunday Indo, but generally is eights or nines all over the place. Uh, and high marks for Carberry, Peter O'Mahony and Ty Byrne as well, coming off the bench. So that's 18 players haven't played well, you know, uh, at least 18, which is very unusual. But uh, I know that often it's hindsight talking, but if, you, if you're watching the hacker beforehand, you know, the camera caught Jack Conan smiling. Which is a lovely moment, and uh, 
But they're lately because of the great book uh, Brendan Fanning did with Willie Handers and there's been a lot of uh, revisiting of Willie Handers and Challenge and the Hake and marching into it. But, you know, that was great. But Ireland ended up losing that day. But So the fact that Ireland won yesterday, like Conan seems to be, you know, his attitude sums up the day. And Bernard Jackman, actually, because I thought uh, Jack Conan was brilliant. I think he had 14 carries for 54 yards of metres of red somewhere. And um, late on, when, when Carby was preparing to take that late, late penalty to seal the deal, to, to make it more than a one-score game. This is when it's, Peter Amani did one of the high fives of the Yeah, but some yeah. of the players were celebrating and Conan was screaming at them to get back to the, to the chase line in case the ball hit the pulse or didn't go dead. You know, so he was still switched on, so he took that attitude from, from the pre-match preamble to the end and that's what you want to see, you know. Obviously, context is everything. We move on, like, and see where we go, where Ireland go from here. But uh, as a day out, there, were, there, were, there wasn't many as good. No, and that's all it is. That's all it is. I mean, you can enjoy the day without it meaning that you think Ireland are perfect yeah. in the way or going. And to even win the, the world reaction Cup. now, like, just even online fans, I think people have been stung now. They kind of realise that <laughs> they can enjoy it, but it doesn't mean Ireland are going to win the World Cup or even reach a quarter final or win a quarter final. Yeah. Look, when you were 111 years waiting for the first and now yeah. it's three and five years, there is something interesting happening, that's for sure. Uh, Gav, just one last point. The James Lowe blossoming or the re-emergence is maybe one of the more dramatic aspects of what's happened here uh, this month because you would have to say during the Six Nations, his defensive frailties, and he mentioned them yesterday and talked about you bollocks and the media keep talking about my D and I've shown you today. But his frailties looked very severe and it seemed, I'd say, as we departed the Six Nations scene this year, that was potentially the end of James Lowe. And pitches up against Japan. He's great all action. There are worries about his defence, obviously, but Andy Farrell sticks with him and puts him in uh, for the all backs game. It's not like in the United Rugby Championship we've seen him tested all that much. I wonder, like, has Farrell been working with him behind the scenes? Is, have Leinster been really focusing on this area? Because that, that really caught a lot of people unawares, I think, the, the low November. Well, Stuart Lancaster said it from day one with James Lowe. He, this is going to be a really important player to us, but I've got a lot of work to do with him on his defensive positioning. So that's a couple of years. That's before he was even qualified. Uh, Andy Farrell said it just after the Japan game, I think. He goes, yeah, we had some hard words with him after the Six Nations because it was, it's kind of a lack of concentration more than anything else. I think just my interpretation of it was when he didn't cover back for two tries. It happened in two different games last year, last season. And... In any other era, oh, like the, the, the New Zealand guy over on residency, uh, is, he's, he's an easy guy to drop. So the man management by Andy Farrell is to be admired. And also the guy himself, I'd say James Lowe wanted to play against the All Blacks more than he's ever wanted to do anything in his life. So imagine what he did. He definitely has work behind the scenes. The way he came in off his line to make that man and ball tackle, if he gets that wrong, Ireland lose the match in the 75th minute or whatever it was. Yeah, on Ioana, yeah. So, yeah, so all credit, <laughs> loads of credit to him. And not many people could finish his try like he did. Um, but yeah, I thought he was done. I thought that was the end of him in an Ireland jersey. I thought that other lads deserved it more or wanted it more. But that's wrong. He proved us all wrong. Um, a lot of people now have to show that this team their respect. Uh, they did. They were better than the All Blacks yesterday. They were a better team. You know, their pack was better. You know, mm. now there's a couple of new guys in that All Blacks pack, but. You know, you, you know, like I don't think it, New Zealand are not. New Zealand are always like that after they lose a game. They don't, they don't crib or moan or anything like that. But like, in, if you look at the New Zealand Herald today, they were saying like, God, we were we were glad the game ended when it did, or we could have lost by more. Yeah. We'll take a short break. That is the voice of Gav Kumski over in Luxembourg. He's covering the Irish game for the Irish Times. We have Kieran Cunningham here in studio. Loads more to talk about, and we'll do that in just a few moments. The Sunday Papers on Off the Ball. We know you have many questions when it comes to investing and growing your nest egg. So this weekend on News Talk, together with Irish Life, we want to help you start your investing journey with actual trusted advice. Find out more at newstalk.com forward slash nest egg. Irish Life Assurance PLC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Talking History. This week, Talking History is broadcasting live from the Harrison Chambers of Distinction, a bohemian boutique hotel in Belfast. We'll be commemorating the centenary of Northern Ireland and Partition with a great lineup of guests and some local musicians too. So join us this Sunday night on Talking History from 7 pm to 8 pm. Talking History with Patrick Gagan on News Talk.
Make every dish a perfect success with Autopilot preset programs. Now on the latest range of Bosch Pyrolytic self-cleaning ovens. For more information, go online to paracity.ie. 123inc.ie. No customs, no delays, no hassle. We don't just talk fast, we deliver fast. Get your ink, toner, printers, battery, stationery and other office supplies delivered next day from Dublin. And you love our prices. 123inc.ie. Your phone rings. Who could it be? It's just Jane. It's not just Jane. It's your overly enthusiastic training buddy. And she's taking you on a gentle hike. You climb higher and higher, never looking back. Mountain goats looking on in awe. And when you reach the top, you take out that flag of yours and give that mountain a new name. Mount Kilimanjaro! Freedom is calling. It's very high. Virgin Mobile. Bring on amazing. T's and C's apply. See virginmobile.ie. <laughs> You're finally able to travel as normal again. So here's a brief refresher on how to take the train. The train, for those who don't remember, is the big, long thing that runs on tracks. Face coverings, of course, must be worn. On board, you can relax, watch the world go by, take a nap, or even listen to music from the popular hit parade. Please do not dance on the train. If traveling with a spouse or acquaintance, engage them in light conversation, or break out the cards for a spirited game of bridge. Yes, it's all fun and games on the train. Rediscover the joy of the train with great fares at irishrail.ie. Erin Road Erin, part of the Transport for Ireland network. Insuremycars.ie Don't cut corners on your car insurance. Get a better quote at insuremycars.ie. Ireland's trusted car insurance specialists. We search the market to get you the best cover at the lowest prices. Insuremycars.ie City Financial Marketing Group Limited Trading as insuremycars.ie is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Gas Networks Ireland is changing Ireland's energy future. Thanks to natural gas, we already connect over 700,000 Irish homes and businesses to affordable and efficient energy. And now, with renewable gas, we're moving towards a cleaner energy future. Enjoy the reliability and convenience of gas. Visit gasnetworks.ie to connect today. Gas Networks Ireland. Progress. Naturally. Subject to availability, T's and C's apply. Celebrate Disney Plus Day with an unmissable new lineup and an unbeatable price offer for this week only. Stream Marvel Studios, Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. In Kent's outrun, we really are. Blockbuster action with Jungle Cruise. Here we go. And exclusives like the critically acclaimed new series, Dope Sick. This is the biggest drug in the world. Don't miss this incredible lineup for just $1.99 for your first month of Disney Plus. Subscription required. Offer valid 8 to 14th November for 18 plus consumers without an active Disney Plus subscription. Auto renews at 8.99 per month. Support Irish retail by shopping with Ireland's number one online store, mixgarage.com. With guaranteed next day delivery across a massive range of items, you'll find everything you need for your car, home, garden, staycation, and so much more. Sign up to our sale alerts to access exclusive discounts and get five euro off your first order. Join almost a million happy customers and shop Irish with mixgarage.com. For Brexit-proof shopping delivered straight to your door. Visit MixGarage.com today and buy Irish. Looking for new ways to reward your staff and customers this Christmas? Then surprise them with a Lidl corporate gift card. Use on everyday essentials, middle aisle specials and treats from our Christmas deluxe range. Plus, if you spend over €1,000 before October 30th, you'll get a discount on your cards. Contact our corporate gift team at Lidl.ie slash corporate gift cards. OK, this morning I have to do the food prep, train the new person, call the supplier, send these invoices, then I'm on the till, have that delivery coming, got to sort payroll... And As a small can. business owner, in the food industry, you've a million things on your plate, including food safety training. With Safe Food for Businesses' free online course, your staff can learn the skills anywhere, anytime, by completing our series of short modules. Food safety training. We can help take it off your plate. Sign up today at safefoodforbusiness.com. Try the latest cordless vacuum cleaner technology from Bosch. Our premium model includes a quick changer and two exchangeable battery packs to ensure that you never run out of power. Now with a full 90-day money-back guarantee. For more information, go online to paracity.ie or call in store today. Navin Racecourse is celebrating 100 years and you can join us. Get your tickets now for the iconic Ladbrokes Troy Town Chase Day on Sunday the 21st of November. As well as top class racing, live music, Winter Village and a vintage car show. Get your glad rags on and you could win €1,000 and more in the Newbridge Silverware Best Dress Competition. With online advance admission just €20, Euro, book your ticket now to avoid disappointment at navinracecourse.ie. On 106 to 108 FM. On the News Talk app, powered by Go Loud, 
and smart speaker. This, this is News Talk. It's two o'clock. Good afternoon. I'm Tom Douglas. The Taoiseach says proposals on how to make antigen testing more affordable but not free are due to come to Cabinet this week. Neffet has recommended those taking part in risky activities should take the tests twice a week. 3,805 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed today with 582 patients in the nation's hospitals. Michal Martin says ministers will discuss ways to make them cheaper but not free in the coming days. The minister will be bringing proposals in that regard. We don't envisage uh, uh, tests being made free um, in the general sense uh, but we do get we do want to encourage uh, people to utilize antigen test- testing more frequently more regularly the environment minister has expressed disappointment at the watering down of language around coal in last night's cop 26 deal Eamon ryan has quoted the un secretary general antonio gutierrez in his reaction to the deal when you're close to the abyss as we are on climate change every step matters there, it was a step in the right direction in Glasgow. It does give us greater momentum for action. We now need to, to, to take those steps. In fact, we need to make a leap. Sinn Féin's now almost as popular as Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil combined. Figures in a new poll for the Sunday Times show Mary Lou Macdonald's party surging by six points to 37% approval. Fianna Fáil have slipped three to 20, with coalition partners Fine Gael remaining unchanged at 21 and the Green Party also unchanged at five. Professor of Politics at Dublin City University Gary Murphy says Sinn Féin won't be complacent despite the strong numbers. There were, there were mutterings within Sinn Féin itself after the catastrophic results the party had in Europe and the local elections in uh, 29, the summer of 2019 yeah. and yet eight months later they were getting the most uh, the most votes in mm-hmm. the general election so you know they've got some very good strategists there who I think won't be getting carried away Finally for now the Spice Girls are in so-called confidential talks about a 2023 world tour an insider has told the Sun on Sunday newspaper that it would start in Australia and go from there It's two minutes past two News Talk Weather. Thanks to Ryanair. See friends and family this Christmas. But hurry, seats are selling fast. Mostly cloudy and misty with some fog patches that'll clear slowly. Dry for the most part with rain in the northwest. Today's temperatures will reach 13 to 16 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. The Sunday Papers on Off the Ball. You're very welcome back. Gavin Comiskey of the Irish Times is with us. He's over in Luxembourg for the game this evening. And Kieran Cunningham, chief sports writer with the Irish Daily Star, is here in studio. So we are turning to horse racing and some extraordinary pieces in the papers today. Paul Kimmage in the Sunday Independent. There's David Walsh on the back page of the Sunday Times. And in the Racing Post, Richard Forstall has spoken to the therapist at the centre of Tuesday's Department of Agriculture raid on premises in County Kildare, which saw illegal substances seized. So to maybe just start with John Warwick for a moment. He's the therapist at the centre of the raid on Tuesday. And he's spoken exclusively to the Racing Post. It's on page 15 here of the Racing Post. Warwick... Uh, accepted, writes Richard Forstall, he was in possession of substances that should not have been in the country when the Department of Agriculture and the Gardaí descended unannounced on the premises in Monaster Evan during the weekend, or over the week rather. Ted Walsh and Liam Burke have confirmed they were the two trainers who were there and on the scene uh, when the raid was happening and have denied any wrongdoing whatsoever. Ted Walsh said he was there to get uh, a tendon injury treated with a laser device. Burke insisted he was not even a client of Warwick's. He was explaining he was dropping off a horse for somebody else. So uh, Warwick, 74 years of age, says he's been effectively retired from full-time practice for some years. He uh, accepted uh, he was no longer properly registered as an equine therapist. He was adamant there were no steroids or growth hormones in his possession during the raid. He is quoted as saying, people may be making out that there is dope there, but there is no dope. It's all medication, but it's not licensed in Ireland. There's nothing that would fail a dope test, but I have certainly contravened the rules. He says, there were some products in there that were destined for Kuwait, and I brought them with me because I was flying to Kuwait, but that's beside the point. They shouldn't have been in the country in the first place as far as the law is concerned. Richard Forstall says uh, Warwick is well known in both Ireland and Britain. 
chiefly for his laser work on damaged tendons. He was asked in this piece if any of the work he did on racehorses was unlawful and he responded, nothing whatsoever. They can test every animal I've ever touched. I wouldn't compromise an owner or a trainer. My main job is diagnostics. I don't do anything that isn't physical. I look after muscles, ligaments, tendons and sometimes uh, joints. And uh, Jessica Harrington uh, spoke as well to the Racing Post and certainly was not apologetic at all about working with John Warwick. I had a filly there because I've always used John for as long as he's been doing this work. He does all my tendon and suspensory injuries. It entails no drugs because it's a laser treatment and it's pain-free for the horse. So that's page 15 of the Racing Post. Uh, Paul Kimmage across pages 18 and 19 of the Sunday Independent. Extraordinary read. In the print edition, John Warwick isn't named, but uh, subsequently in the online versions he is, presumably. Uh, yeah. In a later edition, the edition of the Sunday Indo, I have he's named, is the it, print edition. Oh, he's yeah, named in your yeah, print edition, yeah. right, I must have an earlier one here. So uh, presumably that's uh, post John Warwick speaking to the Racing Post. So um, uh, the context again is this uh, raid on Tuesday and on the very same day there was an Oireachtas uh, committee uh, report really which um, had been instigated four months previously on the back of the uh, Jim Bulger comments about doping being the number one problem in racing so Jackie Cal, the chairman of the joint committee and David Walsh talks about the uh, report whilst this raid was happening I mean you couldn't make up the timing but he certainly was saying Jackie Kyle, chairman of the joint Oireachtas committee we're happy that the testing standards in Irish racing are of the highest possible international standards this was a 34 page uh, report and you know David Walsh uh, certainly notes the irony of this happening on the day when Irish racing uh, boasted of their high drug testing standards a raid on a stud by the Gardaí makes it even harder to dispute leading trainers belief there is doping culture so that's David Walsh's uh, lead on the back page of the Sunday Times and then I suppose we should uh, tease out the Paul Kimmich piece because it's the longest of the three it's across uh, two pages 18 and 19 mm -hmm. In effect, uh, Kieran, the, uh, th there's two parts to Paul Kimmage's piece. The latter half is quite dramatic and we'll come to it. It's Paul Kimmage essentially phoning various trainers whose trucks have been spotted at this yard and it's getting brilliant. their take. And then part one, it's a telephone conversation from uh, seven months ago telephone conversation from seven months ago and it's with John Warwick this equine therapist and it's with a man who won't be named but has believed for some time that the use of performance enhancing drugs is endemic in Irish racing so there's a, there's a phone conversation here recorded seven months ago between John Warwick this equine therapist and a man who believes there is an issue in the sport who won't be named. So that that's effectively the setup of the Paul Kimmich piece. Yeah, that that sets it up. You know, it's a very interesting conversation. And I was a curious, like, I'm, I'm, you know, it raises questions about the circumstances. I'm curious, very curious who the guy is. Yeah. Very curious did John Warwick know he was being recorded? You know, or do, you know, did he agree to do this interview uh, with this chap? Um, and like, it's uh, John Warwick is quite a, is quite open in it, like in 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 who he is, what he does. What his treatments are about, you know, it's, um, you know, the crux of it is, uh, you know, the stuff he uses, the products he uses to lower the neuroblasts, as he, as he calls it now. And he says, it's not rocket science. I spent quite a lot of time in the States when I was a little bit younger. I learned a lot of things there which are not really used here. They have products that we don't have, can't have, or not supposed to have whatever you want to call it. But I like horses, and if I can help them, you will, you know. And there's a product that can help you in that respect. Uh, the unnamed man asks him, but is, it, is it, but is it legal, or are you saying it's not a licensed product that is not legal in the UK? A Warwick says it's totally legal and passes all dope tests. Whether it's legal to use it in the UK is another story. But it's not illegal to have, and it doesn't fail any dope tests. And there does seem to be contradictions in this, like because he says earlier, the products we don't have, can't have, are not supposed to have. Um, and, and they, you know, it says uh, it's totally legal. Whether it's legal to use it in the UK is another story. So I'm quite confused with that. But it goes on then. Um, well, could I just jo jump yeah. in there for a second? We'll just tease out part one of this for a moment yeah. and we'll get into the trainers then. So as you said, this conversation, it seems Warwick is very open. 
He talks about his career a little bit. So it's about, you know, a full page of the Sunday Independent talks about how he lives in Scotland now. He's in his 70s and he comes back to Ireland routinely and uses this yard in Monaster Evan. He says he's out the door busy, <coughs> non-stop, treating lots of people. It seems he's a real specialist in tendon injuries. So he said, and look, on the face of it, you know, initially he talks about um, how it's about identifying the problem and how... He uh, hates steroids and doesn't use them. It's about uh, treating the problem through uh, movement and that all sounds absolutely kosher and and very progressive. But he mentions at one stage when he's talking about how he treats the horses where he says, so I'll look at the horse and we'll we'll do our, our bits and pieces. He says, then I'll go ahead and take the horse to a stable and do what I've got to do. I'll bring him out literally 10 minutes later and after he'll come out, the train. I'll say, have a look at him now and everybody can see the difference. And the unidentified man says to Warwick, when you say you do what you have to do, what does that mean? And Warwick laughs. We put a product in there that, as you said, Kieran, lowers the neuroblasts. And the unidentified man asks a bit more about this product. And there's that quote you had about being in the States where they have products that we don't. But he says, I like horses and if I can help them, I will. And there is a product that uh, can help you in that respect. And again, there is that strange comment where he's asked, you know, is this licensed? Is it legal? Totally legal, passes all dope tests. Whether it's legal to use in the UK is another story, but it's not illegal to have it and it doesn't fail any any dope tests. That's a confusing line for me. I don't fully know mm, no, what to make that, yeah. of that line. And also, this was a police raid, I think we should note. Yeah, this was... David Walsh points out that the FBI are involved yeah. in this. This is, this is as juicy as sports writing gets, I, personally, I think, and... Uh, like David Walsh takes it to one level and then Kimmage goes to a whole other place of just knocking on doors, like old school, proper reporting, ringing these people up, asking them if they know the person. And then when they deny it, well, you're you're well, uh, proven that they, ha- they have to, you know. Yeah, it's I'll, very, very interesting. It's really good journalism. I think. No, for sure. Top, top. I'll, I'll come to that in a second, Gab. I just, I'm conscious there's people listening who won't have read the piece. And so if we, if we just jump into that, maybe... We won't take them with us. So that's where we are in terms of this conversation. There is another aspect of this conversation as well, which is uh, damning enough where he's talking, again, the unidentified man in Kimmage's piece with Warwick on the phone seven months ago. This is seven months ago. This is before the raid. And he's talking about, you know, uh, what do you do maybe after races for post-race discomfort? And he mentions a muscle calming agent He says, the horse is certainly not going to run in the next five or six days, so the trainer's not going to give an SH1T. And he's asked about that substance when it comes to positive tests. This is for, you know, again, in the days after a race where you want the horse to recover. And the answer is, no, that substance won't pass a dope test. It's six days before you can present the horse for a dope test. So that's a very significant line, I think. And just one last point. Uh, the unidentified man is again talking to Warwick and asks him about Irish racing generally and he says what I did discover in Ireland quite early on there isn't a single yard that I've ever been on in 30 years that doesn't have a head lad or someone that isn't good with a needle they don't need to phone the vet to give the horse an IV okay so that's this conversation from seven months back about the nature of the treatment that's uh, dished out to the horses or given to the horses on this yard. And then I suppose the, the part you, you all, that grabbed you all, this unidentified man in the conversation with Warwick hired a private investigator to keep an eye on this yard and to monitor the trucks that are arriving and from which trainers they're coming from. 56 horse boxes over the summer, for instance, and then the dates are here and a lot of the horse boxes are unbranded so you don't know which trainer owns them and a lot of them are branded so you do. Uh, there's the Ted Walsh account which was an RTE radio yesterday where he drove and he arrived and he was bringing the horse for laser treatment in effect and I think people are fairly au fait with that now and uh, he's had um, samples from his horses taken and he's talking about it being a terrible coincidence that he's there and not good but denies any wrongdoing strongly the other trainers Jessica Harrington, Noel Kelly Enda Bulger and then we'll get to Aidan O'Brien in a second are all phoned as well um, I appreciate I'm doing a lot of the talking here, but I just think to mm. bring people up to speed, I'll get your thoughts on this in a second then. So Jessica Harrington, for instance, one of the trainers. So this is part two, really, of this piece, I would say. Paul Kimmage's phones, Jessica Harrington. I'm writing a piece about the therapist for Sunday. Yes, I believe you've known, been using him for a long time. 
and she says, I've used him to do my horse's tendons. He's good at doing tendons and that's all I've used him for. Are you still using him? I had another horse there the other day. Yes, I'm still using him. And that does not involve any drugs. It's a laser, a much more unintrusive form of treating tendons. I'm sure you know about the raid and what was found. I know about the raid, but when you do a tendon operation on a horse, it's nothing to do with drugs. But they found drugs in the raid. That's nothing to do with what my, what my horse was having done to it. I just don't like this attitude. If there's drugs, mu they must have been used. The horses that I sent there went down to have the laser treatment, which takes uh, two minutes. The horse is then hosed down and walked for two more days, and then they come back to me. Then there's Enda Bulger, trains out of Limerick. I'm writing this piece about the therapist. Oh, right, yes. What do you know about him? He used to do work down in Limerick years ago, but I don't think he has any letters after his name or anything. Everything was done with his hands. You haven't used him since? Oh, Jesus, he's out of our system a long time. I'm just looking at a photo here of your horse box in his yard. Of my horse box? Yeah, a couple of months ago. Oh, for F's sake. It was probably one of the girls that worked for me. She must have had an event horse or something like that, but I definitely don't use him for the race horses. So it was one of the girls. I'd say so, yeah. You don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. Noel Kelly then trains at a dairy. Do you know him? Jesus, I wouldn't know much about him. Do you use him? No. You've never used him? No, no. I'm looking at a photograph of your horse barks in his yard in June. What yard? The one that was raided the other day. No, I've never heard tell of it. So you don't know what your horse box was doing there? Geez, I don't know nothing about that. Uh, Peter Fahey in Monastery Evan Kildare. I'm writing a piece about the therapist. Oh yeah, do you know him? I don't, to be honest. You've never used him. I've no comment. You've no comment? No, I don't know anything about him. So you've never used him? No. I have a photograph here of your horse box driving into his clinic. You've what? I'm looking at a photograph of one of your horse boxes driving into his clinic. My horse box? Yeah, June 29th. Send it on to me, will you? You don't know anything about it. Just send it on to me and I'll know who was driving it. I send him a copy of the photo, writes Paul Kimmage. He doesn't reply. Uh, we'll come to Aidan O'Brien in a second. But um, So Gav, I guess that's the, the part that's uh, very interesting as well. And I don't know, overall thoughts now? Hopefully that's given people at home a sense of what's kind of a long and complicated enough piece. My, my overall thoughts on it are, the, the, you haven't read out the Aidan O'Brien conversation yet. That is just unbelievable stuff. But um, my overall thoughts are, everyone needs to go out and buy the Sunday Independent and the Sunday Times today and read this stuff because there's so much information that none of us knew anything about. And then um, Jim Bulger's fascinating uh, interview a couple of months back there with Kimmage looked like uh, a light being shined on it, but it would all go away and all that. I don't think it can go away now after this, you know? Like, this is... Um, this puts horse racing in Ireland right under the microscope. And uh, very interestingly enough, it was the, it was dealt with by Jackie Cahill from the Fianna Fáil TD, where it, it seemed like it had been politicians had had investigated and sorted it and moved on on the very same day that the raid took place, I'm led to believe. Mm. So, yeah, um, but uh, I, out of all, everything, you've, you've read so much of the piece there and you still haven't even ruined the piece for people who can still go out and buy the Sindo. But uh, the conversation with uh, between Kim and Janet and O'Brien, I thought, was fascinating. OK, well, then I'll come to it. So it's not my intention to ruin the piece. You should, I mean, we're scratching the no, surface. No, I don't, I don't think you have, by yeah. the way. I don't even, and you've read loads of it. Yeah, yeah, OK. Well, I'm, I'm definitely not trying to. And absolutely, it merits the uh, few quid to read this piece for sure if you're thinking about it, buying a paper today. So we also placed a call to Aidan O'Brien. I'm writing a piece on the therapist. He says he worked for you. Listen, between you and I, no, we're on the record, Aidan. He says he worked for you. He worked for an owner that we had. So he didn't work for you. He definitely didn't work for me. He says he still works for Coolmore. Listen, that's the first I've heard of that. I wouldn't know anything about him working for Coolmore. Uh, the raid took place at this stud and the director of the stud is TJ Comerford, your head lad. Aidan O'Brien says, that's the first I've heard of that. Well, that's where they found the banned products. For two years now, it's been owned by TJ Comerford and a lady called Stephanie Oxco Moore. Yeah, that's TJ's girlfriend, says Aidan O'Brien. Uh, you didn't know that was the yard where they did the raid. No, I didn't. Do you have a number for TJ? I do, of course. Would you mind texting to me, please? TJ Comerford then. Was expecting my call. I know what you're ringing me for, he says. OK, go on. Well, you ask the questions. You're a director of this stud. He says, myself and Stephanie bought it, I suppose, two years ago. We didn't know what we were going to do with it, but at the time we thought... Well, sorry, but at the time we bought it, the therapist was working out of here, so we kept it the same. I don't know how long the therapist has been coming here. I don't deal with him. He pays for the use of the place. He treats horses here. People come every Tuesday and Wednesday. Were you there on Tuesday? No, I wasn't. And he goes on to say, I personally have no say as to what he does or doesn't do. It's not my business. Paul Kimmich says, and no one's spoken to you about it. 
He says no. Although I, I suppose if authorities were planning a raid, they were not necessarily going to let everybody know they were coming. Um, I suspect they may talk to him in due course. But this is an ongoing investigation and there are still a bunch of things here, Kieran. we don't know, mm. <laughs> you know. Uh, like the, the conversation between the unnamed man who has his, his suspicions recorded seven months ago with John Warwick. It's hard to make sense of lines like it's totally legal and passes all dope tests. Whether it's legal to use in the UK is another story, but it's not illegal to have and it doesn't fail any dope tests. Yeah. For instance. Yeah. That, like that's not to say more questions here no, no. are absolutely not required. Like, like, obviously, we don't know who this man is, but, um, you know, reading between the lines, it's, it seems to me it's somebody involved in the racing industry. The, the, the fact that it went to to the length of hiring a private investigator to look into this, like, I think... I get the impression from this that this un, un, unidentified man is somebody who's within the industry and doing things the way he feels they should be done, that there's other people that are bending the rules. So he decided to take it upon himself to look into this. Um, you know, the interviews with the various racing people um, wh whose horse boxes were, were identified in the yard, there's no great clarity there, you know. Uh, they all raise more questions, you know. They all seem Nobody to... Nobody knows that in Kieran. No, no. You know? no like Nobody it, has a clue. No, Not like clue, it strikes but... me because... Like, Paul, Paul Kimmage has been looking into the story for quite a while. And I would say when they got the calls, and they said, this is Paul Kimmage, I'm looking at... I would say they were in guard straight away. They were probably pretty defensive. And they don't give much away, but they do make you want to know more. And, like, David Walsh in the, in the third last paragraph has a line, one source has told me there's a belief within the investigation that when the products taken from the yard are analysed, the story will become even bigger. You know, so I think it's very damaging for racing. Uh, all this come out over the last year, you know, particularly the, the claims Jim Bolger made. Um, you know, there was a defensiveness from a fair few within the industry and within the racing media. You know, but David Walsh and Paul Kimmage are probably the two journalists who've driven the story more than anything. And it does, uh, like the tone of coverage around racing is generally very ce celebratory. Celebra celebratory. You know, there's always, you know, with the greatness of the jockeys and the trainers and how important it is in providing employment in Ireland, etc. And those things are all true. But it's clear as well that there's a, there's a murky side to Irish racing and there's a lot of questions need to be asked and that this, uh, there aren't very many convincing answers coming out of racing, I yeah. don't think. David Walsh's piece says, and so I'm suspecting this is the, obviously the same person that is the unnamed person in Paul Kimmage's piece because in David Walsh's piece he says intelligence has been provided to the authorities by someone who had over a number of weeks monitored the flow of equine traffic to the clinic from the names on the horse boxes and the amount of traffic in and out of the stud it was clear that many believed in the man's methods so that tallies with the unnamed man in Paul Kimmage's piece who hired the private investigator mm. and then you would think Gavin handed over that information to the authorities who then conducted the raid that it seems is how we got here yeah like we're, we're dealing with um, the, the people who are re reporting on this, David Walsh, Paul Kimmage, and you've Alan English, who was the sport, who's, sports, who's the editor of the Sun Independent, yeah, and John Green um, as well, and John Green. These these men have dealt with uh, the Lance Armstrong issue many many years ago as well, and they've dealt with a um, a lot of big cases and big sports scandals over the years, so they know what to do. And I'd say this was legal within an inch of its life. Um, to get it onto the page, you know, I think um, there was obviously there's a lot of stuff they're not able to say, but but drip by drip they've get they've got a lot of this out here now. Um, I I am fascinated to see what the reaction is now from all the naysayers in the industry who have uh, who threw their arms up in the air after the Bulger Kimmage interview, and um, to see what happens next. Um, it's going to be very hard to sweep this away. It's going to be very hard to get rid of this because uh, a deep a lot of investment and time and i wouldn't say it's cheap a lot of good really really uh, slow forensic journalism has been done here um to get these pieces onto the page um and i don't i don't know if it's just me but are all the sunday papers excellent this is this one of the uh, really really good sunday it just seems like the mail on sunday the sunday times and the sunday Indo are right on it to this this weekend yeah well i mean certainly these pieces are mm. incredible yeah 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 um, this is this is um, like this is the kind of stuff that you, you you bring to journalism school. You know, I thought it was excellent. Really, really, I read it all last night, and I had to, I had to this morning when I was having breakfast. I had to go again because it's pinch me stuff. Like it's it's 
it's really showing what's going on there, you know. And um, all these people who are on the ground, they just they, they don't know what's going on. They have no idea that why their horses are involved in this. Fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, we're going to take a short break. So again, there's uh, that shorter piece in the Racing Post where the therapist at the centre of the investigation is stressing that uh, people may be making out that there is dope there. There's no dope. It's all medication, but it's not licensed in Ireland. There is nothing that would fail a dope test, but I've certainly contravened the rules. There were some products in there that were destined for Kuwait. I brought them with me because I was flying to Kuwait, but that's beside the point. They shouldn't have been in the country in the first place as far as the law is concerned. So even to have John Warwick speaking out publicly in the Racing Post there is uh, very significant. And he's stressing, asked if any of the work he did on racehorses was unlawful. He responded, nothing whatsoever. They can test every animal I ever touched. I wouldn't compromise an owner or a trainer is uh, very much his stance on the matter. We'll take a short break. We're back with more from Kieran Cunningham and Gavin Comiskey in just a moment. The Sunday Papers on Off The Ball. You want your nest egg to work harder. But when it comes to investing, you don't know where to begin. That's why this weekend on News Talk, we've come together with Irish Life to help you get started. Irish Life have been helping people make smart investments with their nest egg for over 80 years. And with interest rates so low, can you really afford to do nothing? For actual trusted advice on how to start your investing journey with Irish Life, go to newstalk.com forward slash nest egg. Irish Life Assurance PLC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Now at Power City, save from €50 Euro to €250 Euro on a Bosch kitchen bundle when you buy two or more large Bosch kitchen appliances. For more information, go online to paracity.ie or call in store today. Here, amidst the leafy splendour of suburbia, we're on the trail of an amazing example of natural evolution. Ah, there's one now. The Ecodan heat pump, perfectly adapted to Irish conditions. It converts renewable energy from the air to heat both home and water while emitting significantly less carbon compared to fossil fuel. Hey, you get out of my garden! Homo sapien oratus. Best be going. The Ecodan heat pump from Mitsubishi Electric. Changes for the better. Call 0818 326 326 or visit mitsubishielectric.ie forward slash heating. At AIB, we don't make technology for you to bank. We make it for you to live. Just watch. So you can apply and get a loan through your AIB app or online. Now, now can do so. All from the comfort of home. Banking to fit the way you live. AIB. We back doing. Lender criteria, terms and conditions apply. Over 18s only, subject to approval. Security may be required. And at Irish Banks, PLC is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Don't cut corners on your car insurance. Get a better quote at insuremycars.ie, Ireland's trusted car insurance specialists. We search the market to get you the best cover at the lowest prices. Insuremycars.ie. City Financial Marketing Group Limited Trading as insuremycars.ie is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Have you heard the news? The Irish Independent has a new podcast. For 20 minutes, the Indo Daily Podcast takes you beyond the headlines and into Ireland's most talked about stories. Uncover mysteries from the past, gain an insight into present issues and learn about what Ireland's future holds. Get trusted quality stories in an easy to digest format. It's news like you've never heard it before. The Indo Daily Podcast, available on Spotify, Apple, independent.ie and wherever you get your podcasts. At Aldi, we've got hundreds of passionate suppliers all over Ireland. Fancy a tour? To Cork for Morgan's Fine Fish Irish Hake Fillets. Kilkenny for O'Shea's Potatoes and Carrots. Wicklow for John Pringle's specially selected slow-cooked Irish lamb shoulder. And to Cochlands Bakery Kildare for specially selected cinnamon buns. If they ask where you've been when you get home, just say you've been to Aldi. Aldi, the best of Ireland brought home to your table. Deck the halls this Christmas with totally unlimited air fibre broadband. Our strongest, most reliable broadband connection. Straight to the heart of your home. For just $34.99 a month, stream the latest movies, game to your heart's content and download your favourite music. With Ireland's number one broadband provider. Call 1-800-500-300, go in store or visit air.ie. Air. Let's make possible. Subject to availability, pricing refers to Air Gigabit Fibre 150 Meg. For full terms and conditions, go to air.ie forward slash gigabit fibre. You're finally able to travel as normal again. So here's a brief refresher on how to take the train. The train, for those who don't remember, is the big, long thing that runs on tracks. Face coverings, of course, must be worn. 
on board, you can relax, watch the world go by, take a nap, or even listen to music from the popular hit parade? Please do not dance on the train. If traveling with a spouse or acquaintance, engage them in light conversation, or break out the cards for a spirited game of bridge. Yes, it's all fun and games on the train. Rediscover the joy of the train with great fares at irishrail.ie. Erin Road Erin, part of the Transport for Ireland network. We're funny creatures as humans, impulsive, stubborn. We procrastinate for eternity and make decisions on a whim. Can we ever say with complete certainty where our choices are going to take us? Just remember, once in a while, we get it right. You'll never take a wrong turn with Toyota, Ireland's best-selling hybrid electric cars. Toyota, built for a better world. Best-selling claim based on most recently published figures. Enjoy endless entertainment with a TCL Mini LED QLED TV. TCL's Mini LED technology makes it one of the slimmest direct LED TVs, giving great picture quality without compromise on design. Discover the TCL range now on powercity.ie. There's never been a better time to switch to Electric Ireland. We're offering all new customers a €265 Euro welcome bonus. All you have to do is call 1800 30 50 90 or visit electricireland.ie. For your welcome bonus, switch today. Electric Ireland. We're brighter together. Estimated annual bill €2,019. Euro. Average consumption, urban 24-hour discounted unit rate. Standing charge, PSO levy and carbon tax. Residential dual fuel direct debit and online billing. T's and C's apply. See electricireland.ie slash EAB. Rates at 1st of November 2021, subject to change. The Sunday Papers on Off The Ball. Now you're very welcome back. Gavin Kumsky of the Irish Times is with us. Kieran Cunningham, Chief Sports Writer with the Irish Daily Star here as well. Uh, we'll just return to the rugby because there are a few strong pieces on the week that was for the Irish women's team. And uh, Mark Gallagher, for instance, has spoken to Jenny Murphy. This, if you hadn't been following it, follows Anthony Eddy. He's the IRFU Director of Women's Rugby. Gave an interview during the week where I think in the eyes of the team and former players, he put the blame for the failure to make the World Cup very much on the doorstep of the players and their lack of performance. And Cleena Maloney included, who's very much on the team currently, talked about it as uh, spreading slurry and uh, lots of former players were unhappy with the interview as well, including Jenny Murphy, who speaks here to Mark Gallagher in the Mail on Sunday on page 74. Uh, she had called it spineless on Twitter. So she says the players didn't perform well and they've held their hands up and admitted that players will always admit when they don't play well. But it also needs to be asked if the structures were in place that allowed the girls to perform to the best of their abilities. She says of the new coach coming in, Greg McWilliams, will he be allowed to do the job as best he can? Will he select the team? Will he be given the right tools to do the job properly? And she says of the sevens and fifteens juggling act, which is going on at the moment, it's not working. It's not benefiting either side. It actually hurts them. If something isn't working, you have to go back to the drawing board, is uh, some of the quotes that she um, gives to Mark Gallagher. So, Gav, I'm sure you've been following this very closely over the past week or so. There's that Mark Gallagher piece. There's Brennan Fanning, a few others on the, the week that was. Yeah, that's incredibly brave and courageous by Jenny Murphy. She's still the Leinster number eight, you know, that in the Interpros. And if it wasn't for injuries and her views, her telling the truth about what's happening behind the scenes, I think she'd be closing in on 100 caps as opposed to 20 odd by now. But um, now there you go. And she, she gives an interview with Mark Gallagher, which pretty much kind of, if I, I, I've lost hope, I don't think women's rugby in Ireland will ever come back. When you hear Jenny, I'll just say what she said. One of the things she said to Mark, she goes, if you're a parent driving your daughter to training and you see what is happening in women's rugby and she also has a choice of soccer or Gaelic, you're going to choose soccer or Gaelic. That's that's, an, that's a current international, that's a current player saying that, you know? Just like, and Brennan Fanning writes a very funny piece because he explains to city folk what's, what slurry spreading is. But he also, um, uh, he goes right into it. And like Adam Griggs has been, dragged over the coals, the same as Tom Tierney was dragged over the coals during the 2017 World Cup. These two guys are good young co or good young coaches, hard-working coaches, who shouldn't have been the head coaches of an international rugby team. They just weren't ready, you know? And as Jenny pointed out, they they did they actually weren't. They didn't have full control. That's then to Anthony Eddy, who, again, is in an impossible job because he needs to run a sevens program for men and women, and he's overseeing a women's team. That's three jobs. 
Now, what should have happened after the 2014 World Cup when Irish Ireland were the third best team in the world is Greg McWilliams, who was the assistant coach, who's now been made head coach from next month, he should have been given the job. But instead, he was off to America for seven years where he's gained a lot of experience at the lead end of the men's game. So it's a great appointment, him coming back in, but I, I really feel like it's too late unless they have, unless someone like Greg McWilliams was in Anthony Eddie's job and had total control. Eddie was on the record this week saying that he'll be doing the same job as Adam Griggs. So that's the definition of insanity, you know. Um, I, I I know Greg McWilliams is a good coach. I know he'll he'll definitely he'll I imagine he'll do something similar to what Andy Farrell's done with the men. He'll look for athletes, and he'll try and put fifteen athletes on the pitch because again, that's that's how Irish rugby should be doing it. But like Brendan Fanning's piece about it all is very funny because you know it, it, it's so nuts that yeah you kind of have to take it back. But, but what I noticed, like Andrew Porter spoke this week on the record about the women and how they support them. Philip Brown, the CEO, the outgoing CEO, the RFU, spoke on the record this week about how you might not notice it, but we're fully supportive of them. Evidence is the only thing, you know. And like this is all this I keep I've mentioned all Eddie Griggs and all these guys. It's not on them. It's on um, it's on the IRFU committee who've been asleep at the wheel of this for years, you know. And um, the, and I've been reporting on it for ten years, and uh, I didn't think it'd get as grim. I think people will look back at 2021 and they'll see it's the year when Seamus Coleman turned around to the FAI and said, we are not treating our women's international team the way we've been treating them. That stops now. And we haven't seen that from any of the male professional players. They have to, a quote has to be dragged out of them to support the women. And that is, that's the worst thing about it at all. Like, but Jenny's saying that like, it's, it's, it's too late <laughs> that parents are, parents are, are sending their, their daughters to Gaelic and football. It's just so grim, but, Again, Brendan Fanning's piece, I think it's the best rugby piece in the paper, he, not all the All Black stuff notwithstanding. Um, he, and he, he, for again, for a lot of people might have just skipped over this. If you want to know exactly what we're talking about, and Brendan Fanning points it out, he goes, Murray Kinsler put the entire transcript up of the interview with Anthony Eddie on the 42. So if you want to see, and like that's without even seeing how it was delivered, um, I'd, if anyone cares about this, I suggest you go there and listen to what the director of women's rugby is saying about these players. And... Um, yeah, it's it's as grim as it's so grim. I just don't think they can fix it now. I think reputationally, women's rugby in Ireland has been so badly damaged that I don't think there's any way back. I think one of the most interesting parts of that, uh, Joe, is um, Brendan Fanning brings up. Uh, he, he mentioned five points that he says uh, Will Grigg or Adam Griggs could have made um, around the, around the woman's situation, and I think the last two are particularly interesting. He says. Uh, we actually resource the national squad pretty well, but because our playing coaching numbers are so low and our competition so weak, there's no environment to produce top quality players. This and the diversion that is sevens contributed to the meltdown of the World Cup qualifiers in Parma. That said, we, should, we, we would ask these players to stop talking about their grief over this. And then he said as well, ask the GAA how long it took to develop girls and women's football into the industry it is now. Post-COVID, we don't have the human or financial resources to turbocharge this one. Sorry. And, you know, that's interesting in the context of the IRFU numbers last week that uh, COVID saw their uh, cash reserves drop by over 40 million. And, you know, uh, like everybody knows, quite a few people have lost their jobs in Irish rugby. And, you know, when we look, it's too easy to think, no, this is similar to other issues that have cropped up in, in women's sport that are down to resources and not been resourced. But Brenda says they've actually been resourced well, but, they, you know, there's problems elsewhere. But, uh, you know, Gavin's well, Kieran, been on this story. Kieran, yeah, I'm just going to say, Gavin, you're in this story a lot more than me. I'm only reading it, but uh, just go on that. What were you going to say? So, yeah, Kieran, j- just that uh, this women's team that lost in Parma uh, didn't play in an interpros. So they had no, no, they haven't played any games of rugby. There's no club scene but in the lead up because of COVID, even though the men's club scene managed to get its act together. And that's where they play. Hmm. And then they put an interpros together and pulled the internationals. Yeah. Like, that was just asking for this to happen. That was just setting it up. So they came in and they kept going, don't worry, our training, and our camps are so intense that we're going to be ready for test match rugby. You find me someone in, the, in anywhere in the world of sport that says training is better than matches, hmm. like competitive matches that were on TV. We know what happened in Donnybrook and uh, Eddie completely said, I've got nothing to do with me in his interview, in his chat this week. And they also, we all know what happened. They put Anthony Eddie up because it was an All Blacks week and they said, oh, well, he can't do that much damage. And he managed to, uh, he managed to prove the IRFU communications department wrong. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's one of the worst things about it. And Brennan does touch on it in his pieces. David Nusifora called, phoned Cleena Maloney to, hmm. to, about her tweet. Yeah. 
Um, Cleena Moley, for people again who don't know, is the starting hooker on the Irish rugby team at the moment. Um, why is he? I was in the room and he said the professional game is my brief, not the amateur game. I was in the room. It was two years ago, I think, when he said that, or a year and a half ago. And so why is he calling her? She's not contracted. She's not an employee. That really unsettled me. That made me really. Um, I was like, why is he? Why is he ringing her up and, and talking to her about a quote she said that is so on the money? That like, was just hundred percent on the money. And all the women and so many people in outside and so many retired male rugby players backed her and supported her. Um, but all the employees were just quiet, silent. Yeah. Yeah, Gav, can, can, I, can I ask you, Gav, because... We're in FAI territory here. You know, well, OK, so it's interesting you mentioned the FAI there because you know when it emerged that the Irish women's football team were changing in toilets and having to hand back gear, it was just so obvious to everybody this was a disgrace and it was a, a real call to action. This can't happen anymore. On the charge against the IRFU, so I understand Jenny Murphy's point that the mixing of the sevens and the fifteens hasn't quite worked and to continue down that route is, is a bad idea. Now, Anthony Eddy argued other countries are doing it, so maybe there is a point of debate there, I don't know. The results would suggest oh, Jenny there, Murphy has a point. Is, but there is, yeah, so, yeah. so say there's a debate there and look, I doubt Anthony Eddy came in here and said, if we sort of focus on the sevens, we can ruin both of them. You know, so to be fair to him, they've obviously felt there's a, there's a way here to use players across both. What is the great charge against the RFU since 2014? Because Anthony Eddie's point was, well, the AIL is not competitive enough and just frankly, we just don't have the numbers playing at senior level. We need to get to five, six, seven, eight thousand very, very soon. We're hovering around the 1500 mark at the moment. So we just don't have enough quality to pick from. What, what is the charge, Gav, because you're on top of this story more than most, against the RFU over the last five, six years? They put the wrong people in the jobs. They put Anthony Eddie overseeing the women's 15 aside when his brief should have just been sevens. I don't even think he knew he was going to be taking over the f women's 15s when he came in. Like an He came in as a professional director of rugby, not, nothing to do with amateur. I think he was saddled with that. Okay. I don't think Tom Tierney was the right man to replace Philip Doyle and Greg McWilliams after 2014. And I certainly don't think Adam Griggs. These are, again, like... I don't like dragging their names into it because these are good young coaches yeah. who need you, to have a future in the game. I mean, you could know? argue as but well. They were that, not the men for the job. Fair enough, but you could argue yeah, you, you could argue the fact they've gone to McWilliams now is a very positive move and well intentioned. I doubt any organisation appoints the wrong coach. It does happen sometimes. Look, there's a picture. Lynn Cantwell, who's the director of women's rugby in South Africa, for sure. the spring, women's spring box, right? She's over in Cardiff this weekend because South Africa are playing Wales, right? Yeah. Um, and one of the coaches for Wales is Sophie Spence. They're two of the best rugby players that Ireland have ever had, okay? They've gone into coaching and they've gone into the development of female sport at the highest possible level. And there wasn't even a sniff of a gig for them here. And the two of them, one of them is running South African women's rugby and the other one is running the Welsh pack. Yeah. Okay? So Sophie Spence is probably the greatest ever. She was nominated for World Player of the Year back in 2014, 2015. And Lynn Cantwell is the best female centre we've ever had, bar none. And I'm sorry, Jenny Murphy might be as good as her um, if she hadn't been injured so much. So these two, there's a, two of them taking a picture, one of them in a spring box tracksuit and, and the other one in a Welsh tracksuit on the pitch in Carnival's Park. Mm. That tells you everything you need to know. And why they are not in our system, just beggars belief. Why Fiona Coughlin's on, on RTE doing comms and not deeply involved in the IRFU? Beggar's belief. It's the Grand Slam captain again for people who probably don't know. Why Claire Malloy's been allowed to retire is an absolute joke. You know what I mean? Like she, she, she should have been in this team. She should have been captain in this team for the last few years. And I bet you people don't really know who Claire Malloy is. They don't know she played in All-Ireland for Galway. She played, she won 70-odd caps for Ireland, which one of the best open sides we've ever had. One of the best open sides in the world, even this season. And, you know, she's now tweeting from the sideline about how much of a disgrace this is. Mm -hmm. Like, I could go on and on and on after 10 years reporting on this. I've just watched them let it squander it, squander it. And I hate saying it, but I just don't think there's a way back. I think the reputation of it is just so bad now that, yeah, if you're a parent, you're going, yeah, I'm going to kill Uncle Croaks. Even though there's a great women's setup up in Stradbrook there and Philip Doyle's coaching, you know, up in Black Rock. Mm. But you're just, you see Kula, you see all these things. Like Damien Duff said it. He goes, he goes, my kids are back living in Wicklow and you just see the state of what the GAA offer children over football facilities and over the treatment of people in rugby. Like, well, there's no pathway. So there's a big, there's all these reviews which Philip Doyle, um, or which Philip Brown stood behind this week and these reviews, but they all the stuff that they said this week, every word they said this week, they said after the 2017 World Cup. Mm. And look where we are. Mm. It would break your heart. It really would. If you care, it would break your heart. And do we know our playing numbers increasing or going down? 
So Mary Quinn, who used to be on the RFU committee, I did an interview with her just before the 27 World Cup, and she told me about how all these numbers are about to take a big giant leap. Right. And uh, that was the whole point of the interview she did, because that's what this World Cup was going to do. Yeah. And it, none of it, it just didn't happen. Um, the numbers, I don't know. Um, I don't know if they know. But um, again, you got to give it a break of COVID uh, because of so much things were disrupted. And the funny thing is, because the Sevens World, World Series was cancelled, all the sevens players came into the uh, 15 squad this year and it was it's a huge benefit you know what i mean so nobody was getting pulled you know mm. and like there is another thing there's a girl there's a, there's a young girl called uh young woman called baby parsons who like could turn out to be she is just a star and she could turn out to do what on a much much lesser scale what driscoll did in the late 90s early 2000s by just dragging an amateur setup into the professional era because she's world class her try on friday night at the rds was just she just does it every game, just yeah. world class. Yeah, she's she's the business. Yeah, and that's just great. hope we don't hope we don't waste it, you know? Like, yeah, no, she's a phenomenon and her, and her try, I mean, the pace just jumps out a million miles. They've got something special here. And you could see very emotional celebrations post game, you know, a team who'd been through the ringer. To finish on a oh well, not even a note of optimism, because nothing here in that conversation sounds positive whatsoever. If McWilliams comes in, can he at least herald an upturn in immediate fortunes so that the Irish team can be far more competitive at Six Nations and beyond over the next 18 months, two years, while you would hope the RFU begin to solve those problems a little bit more beneath the surface? Oh, uh, uh, Gregory Williams is a quality coach who could easily be working as an attack coach in one of the top, uh, in a French club or an English club or doing something like that. He's got, he was head coach of the New York men's team for the last few years yeah. and he was the attack coach for the US Eagles. It's a real coup to get him in, and he, uh, he's home for he's home because he wanted to come back to Ireland as much as anything else, you know. So yeah, yeah, no, Greg McWilliams. If I think at this stage now, Anthony Eddy and Duke, David Newsmore will do a bit more than they've been doing to make sure that he's a success. Mm. But like, he's got a massive mental plan. What on earth is he not? Why is he not the coach already? Like, why was he not given these two matches in November to get to know the squad, just to go let this squad do their thing, move past the World Cup. The same coaching setup now, again, is just torture for the, 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 the coaches and it just no step forward for the players. Um, yeah, so he comes in next month. And so the this Six Nations can take a lot of patience, but yeah, he's a quality coach and he had a lot to do with their skill sets going through the roof when they won the 13, 2013 Grand Slam mm. and into the uh, into that World Cup where they reached the semifinals. Because mm. um, he came from a boys uh, uh, coaching in St. Michael's College. So he... he, he, he he brought the skill set that he brought bringing under 13, 14 lads being introduced to rugby because so many of these players are crossover players. They're athletes from Guy, you know. Mm. So yeah, I we, you'll see you'll see a leap if he gets the if he gets enough camps, if he gets enough time. Okay. Uh, clock is properly against us now. We literally have about ninety seconds. I'm conscious, Gav. You're in Luxembourg, uh, uh, Kieran. Looking through the papers on mm. the Irish football front. This, uh, this morning I would say the, a lot of the heat has gone out of the should Kenny get another contract debate I think that debate has largely been settled across the board looking at the papers Yeah well it never made much sense to me a debate anyway because I think if you are bringing in an, inter an international manager you can't judge them on a World Cup campaign because Ireland generally don't qualify for World Cups they haven't qualified this will be I think five in a row they haven't qualified for but they've qualified for two or three of the last European Championships you know Ireland because it's it's very hard for European teams, uh, nations of Ireland's size, to go to a World Cup. So that wouldn't have been a realistic goal. But, you know, at the same time, if this campaign ends with just one win from eight games, the bottom line is that's very disappointing. You know, mat no matter what the progress on the pitch and the players that have been blooded, etc., like one win out of eight, you know, you have to go back to the 78 World Cup for the last time with one, one, one win, and there were only four games then, you know, so... And generally, even in the, if you go look at the last 50 years, Ireland have been generally, bar two or three exceptions, been alive going into the last day of campaigns. They'll either get a playoff spot or just miss out uh, on the last day. So this campaign ended very early. You know, so like I think there was an overreaction to what Liam Brady was saying the other night. It's no harm to have a dissenting voice mm. and say, you know, you know, is this really the answer? Because... Um, the, you know, the, uh, 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 just based on results, it's been pretty dismal. Yeah. You know, so uh, I, I thought as well, it's a fair enough thing to say. And by the way, I 
think Kenny should get another contract. Yeah, yeah, but absolutely. it's it's fair enough at the same time for Brady to say, well, there's still a whole bunch of games left. Why well, we don't even need to make a decision right now. No, we've, we've no, made decisions on managers before ahead of t- we're trying to be prompt and it didn't do us any good. Let's just uh, let it all play out and then make the appropriate decision. I don't know. I don't understand the pressure to give a contract now. No, now. and it's been brought up like there's been you know it's been a push you know to, to for him to be given it two or three games ago even like everybody has been pushing for him to be. Nailed down, like he probably should have been given a, co- uh, a contract for two campaigns at the start. Yeah, maybe to get rid, yeah, you know, yeah. to get rid of this kind of stuff because it's too. It's become, uh, you know, I know the phrase keeps being brought up that is every game seems to be a referendum on Stephen Kenny, but yes. it's no less true. Yes, because like I, we're all sick of talking about. It. Like I think he's done enough. There's been enough improvement, but you know, in 19 games, the only wins have been against Azerbaijan, Qatar, and uh, and uh, Andorra. Mm. And I do think Portugal were disgraced the other night a day in their attitude. Like, they didn't care. They came in as late as they could. They left as quickly as they could. Uh, they rested as many players as they could. All they wanted was to get nobody suspended. Uh, Bruno Fernandes didn't even want to need a shower afterwards. We didn't make sure he didn't run. And so, you know, Ireland were really good in that game, but Portugal were, okay. you know, shambolic, I thought. Gav, a minute. Rapid, yeah, rapid, I, rapid I, 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 I think Stephen Kenny's negotiation position will be damaged by uh, a defeat or a draw tonight. Mm. I think Ireland need to win this game for it. I think because their form since the Hungary match in the summer has been qual- has been increasingly better, except for a, a nightmare performance against Azerbaijan three days after Portugal. So they have to prove they've turned that corner, and that means um, as Blin Brady rightly pointed out, more creativity in midfield and uh, Benny to start scoring goals or or Robinson. Somebody has to somebody has to deliver tonight. Yeah, I went so late there. I've now somehow bought myself two minutes because we can't. We, do, we don't have time for a clip that I was going to play after the break. These are just the machinations behind the scenes. And uh, what would you say about the press conference last night? All fairly relaxed. Kenny relaxed. Nothing out of the ordinary. Yes, yeah, Kenny's been very. He's. It's a real feel that he's comfortable in the position now for the last couple of weeks. Um, Luke Holtz had a real pot at the Irish media. I don't think he's been watching the games. He turned the loose Luxembourg coach. He turned around and he said that it's gone back to what they've been doing for a hundred years: long balls, high pressing, aggressiveness. Such, the old such British. a strange comment to make. I it thought he was, was half messing. Right. I really thought yeah. he, we, because it was a lot of translation and messing and all that. I think he might have been just stirring the pot. Kenny came in and just guffawed at it. Yeah. But the, the only thing, the only reason why there was long balls was direct balls because our Benny was destroying Danilo and treating them like all the League One fullbacks he's been wiping out this season. That's all that was. It was just get the ball up to him because he's he's just he's gonna he's wiped. They had to foul him. He was mm. unplayable. Mm. Um, but Luxembourg, yeah, they stirred the pot. They firmly believe that they're a better team. They think, even though they've been shocking against Serbia and Portugal, so it's a big result. Again, I think Ireland will perform. They just need to put a maybe Adam Eda will come on and score. I don't know. Something has to another little step needs to happen. You know. Yeah. But the team looked nice, trim, good shape training last night. Yeah, they they do, but I uh, know I watched Wales and Belarus last night, and you can just see how much everybody else is improving too. Like, as I did think of Wales the last few years, really, as Gareth Bale carries them, and you know he's still there, still playing very well. But a lot cap. of the yeah, a lot of the younger players, you know, there some really good young players there. So, you know, even though Ireland are progressing, everybody else is doing the work too. You know, the bar's been raised all the time. Look, everyone, just count your blessings that on a Saturday night you weren't watching Wales Belarus. Kieran Cunningham. <laughs> Uh, Chief Sports Writer with the Irish Daily Star. Living your best life out there. (laughs) And uh, Gav Komsky over in Luxembourg. Gav, enjoy the game. Thanks so much for making the effort over there to read the papers for us. Enjoy. No worries. Cheers. The Sunday Papers on Off the Ball. There's a new day coming. Air Business and Evros Technology Group have come together to form Air Evo, Ireland's number one telecommunications and ICT solutions provider and the first of its kind to redefine what's possible, making true end-to-end solutions possible for the first time in Ireland through innovation, expertise, and a unique connection between technology and people so that you can innovate, evolve, and grow your business. Air Evo. Together we make possible. Find out more at airevo.ie. This week on the Home Show podcast. We'll be in the company of royalty when I interview the quilting queens of Limerick. We take cover as we look at the explosion of inflatable furniture. And Roisin Murphy tries to persuade me to put my lino back in the kitchen. The Home Show with Sinead Ryan. Listen to the podcast now at Newstalk.com and on the Newstalk app.
Now at Power City, get free delivery and free recycling on selected Bosch washing machines. For more information, go online to powercity.ie or call in store today. From Terminal 2 to two-storey houses, compact apartments to corporate headquarters, your bedroom, your kitchen, your office canteen, most every room that you've ever been. If these walls could talk, they could tell you who made them. So we'd like to share with you that little detail. We're the walls and the ceilings in fine Irish buildings. We're Jiprock for plaster and plasterboard systems. Jiprock, making the difference. Visit jiprock.ie. On Disney Plus, discover the shocking true story. Less than 1% of people get addicted to Oxycontin. Of how one company's greed triggered the worst drug epidemic in American history. A pharma company is lying about their medication. Addiction rates are on the rise because of this drug. A new and exclusive original series from the executive producer of The Handmaid's Tale. These people trusted me. Can't believe how many of them are good now. Dope Sick, now streaming only on Disney Plus. 18 plus subscription required. T's and C's apply. Support Irish Retail by shopping with Ireland's number one online store, MixGarage.com. With guaranteed next day delivery across a massive range of items, you'll find everything you need for your car, home, garden, staycation, and so much more. Sign up to our sale alerts to access exclusive discounts and get five euro off your first order. Join almost a million happy customers and shop Irish with MixGarage.com for Brexit-proof shopping delivered straight to your door. Visit MixGarage.com today and buy Irish. With Free Now, you can keep your work life and social life separate. At least when it comes to your taxis. Just tag your payment methods as either business or personal. Download the Free Now app for freedom on top. Free Now. Get there your way. Eurocycles, Euro Baby. Come on now, lads. The crack is mighty. The Eurocycles, Euro Baby. Prices can't be bad. 